Hello, welcome to this video on the binomial series. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm helping you through this, more, this, this calculus journey that you're on. And so we want to look at, in this video, what is the binomial series? Um, how do you find it? Um, how do you find the first few terms of it? And how do you use it? And why do we care? <laughs> and so um, the binomial series is, is built off of having a binomial, right? Two terms. We have one plus X is a standard way and raising it to a power, okay? Now we're allowing for that power to be any real number. Um, most cases it's a half, it's a third. And so we wanna be able to find the Taylor series for this function. When it's centered at zero, it has another name, it's called the Maclaurin series. And so how does that work? Well, we know from the Taylor series that each individual term is a power of X minus A. A is the center where you decide to, the, the, the expansion point where you decide to center your series at. In this case, we're sending at zero. So we're gonna have powers of X. Um, then these guys have coefficients and each coefficient is the nth derivative divide, um, evaluated at A and then divided by N factorial. And so what we're gonna do is uh, start with the function, take its derivative, take its second derivative and third derivative, and then be able to figure out what each coefficient is. Let's get started. So we start off with the function one plus x to the k. What is the derivative with respect to x? You bring down the k, you take it to the k minus one. That's it. The inside part has a derivative of one, so you don't have to worry about the chain rule. You do it again. Second derivative, you already have the k down there, so you bring down a k minus one, and then you raise it to the k minus two. Not that bad at all, right? Again, third derivative, k, k minus one, and now a k minus two. And then you raise the one plus x to the k minus three. Ah, oh, this is great, okay. And then finally, uh, well, there's more, but we're gonna stop at the fourth derivative. Instead of putting four as hash marks, what we do up there is we put the um, four and in parentheses to denote the fourth derivative. The k, the k minus one, the k minus two, and now the k minus three all multiplied by one minus x to the k minus four. All right, great. So then after you have these guys, your job is to evaluate them at A, the center. Here we're centered at zero. So we're gonna plug a zero for X into all of these. And what we're getting each time is, instead of one plus X, we're just getting a one. And, and K is a constant. So it's not like, you know, K is some function, it's going off to infinity. K is a constant. So one to the K each time is gonna be a one. All right, so we have a one to the K minus one. That's gonna be a one. So it's gonna be times K. Uh, one to the k minus two, that's gonna be a one times k times k minus two, and so on. You're just getting this coefficient part, k, k minus one, k minus two here, k, k minus one, k minus two, k minus three here. Now it keeps going, but we're just trying to, you know, after a while, stop and find the pattern, find the first few terms, and then hopefully we can find the pattern from those first few terms. So these are just the numerators of each of the individual coefficients. We then must divide by n factorial, um, n equals zero, at zero factorial, which is defined to be one, and then one factorial and two factorial and so on. And then um, these guys then will be the coefficient on x to the n, not x minus a, because a is equal to zero, so x to the n. All right, so we have the first few terms. It's gonna be one plus kx to the one plus k, k minus one, x to the two, divided by two factorial plus k, k minus one, k minus two, divided by three factorial, x to the three, and so on. That's great. So basically what's going on then is we're gonna find that we're only really interested in the first few terms. And so here we have it here. And so somebody asks you to use the binomial um, series to expand a function that's in, you know, it's in the right form of binomial. You just take the one, plus the exponent times the whatever's in the x spot, plus um, the, the k, I'm sorry, k times that, and then k times k minus one over two factorial times the um, uh, times, times x squared and so on. We have, we have a way to expand now and it's great. But whenever you give, a, whenever you give a series, you need to know where, where it converges, uh, what, what x is, is this even valid for? Um, is there a formula for it? Is it possible to get a nice formula that on uh, summation form for it? So we'll put this here as the first few terms, but now on the next slide, let's look at the summation formula. So 
Here's what we have from the last slide. And the difference in each one of these terms is where the numerator stopped at. Um, there's a k, k minus 1 in the, in the second term, a k, k minus 1, k minus 2 in the third. So I've put these in red. This is our stopping term. We have to figure out, based on what n is, how, do we, how are we going to decide what that last term is in the numerator? And so let's lay down what all the n's are. n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, 3, and 4, and it goes on. But we're going to stop right here and hopefully have our pattern. So that red term... The stopping term, I guess I could have put the n equals 1 guy in red too. The stopping term is k minus, not n, k minus the guy before n. k minus 2 when you're 3, k minus 3 when you're 4. So in terms of n, it's going to be k minus the guy before n, which is n minus 1. That's the nth coefficient, divided by n factorial course. Okay, great. That's the formula for the nth coefficient. And it's going to be multiplied by x to the n. We have the series in summation format. Officially, though, when n is equal to zero, it doesn't fit. I mean, this whole stopping term thing, if you have um, n equals zero, you actually have a k plus one as the as the numerator there. And, and, and that's not the case. So what we do is then we take, a, take off the one and start the pattern at one. Um, take off the n equals zero term and, and start the pattern at one. This is the summation form for the binomial series in the format of one plus x raised to the k. Um, there's a little finer detail that we could add to this. Um, when you take a probability class, there's a way to represent that fraction in a better way. It's up to you whether you want to know it or not, but um, it's, it's a famous counting formula. Say you have k objects and you want to choose n of them. 10 objects, you want to choose three. Uh, uh, 10 horses in a, in a race, you want to figure out how many different ways can I choose the uh, uh, three, three of them, like, you know, for the first, second, and third place. How many different ways can I do that where the order doesn't matter? Um, that, that counting exercise there is a common thing that's done in, in, in a probability class. And so it, ha it has a certain formula to it. Um, and, and a symbol as well. So the symbol looks like a fraction. It looks like there's a parentheses around the fraction, but the fraction bar is missing. And so k over n with the parentheses around it is read as k choose n. k objects choose n of them. And there's a formula for it. The formula is uh, the numerator or the top part, uh, k factorial divided by n factorial. And also in the denominator is an n minus k factorial. Oh, that should have been last. I'm sorry. So there we are down there. With the, uh, with the formula for that, and watch what happens. If In the numerator, you have k factorial, right? So we take k, we take off k minus 1, k minus 2. So what this is is, you know, k and all the numbers lower than it. That's what a factorial is. So k, k minus 1, k minus 2, all right? And then what I've written out here is, um, so you keep going, k, k minus 2, k minus 3, and then before n, before k minus n, you have k minus uh, n minus 1, the guy before that. Keep going, and then, you know, to say that it keeps on going forever, I mean, it keeps on going down to one, you put a factorial on it. So officially, k factorial is k, k minus one, k minus two, k minus n minus one, parentheses, and then k minus n factorial. And that's nice because the k minus n factorial from the denominator cancels, and you have exactly our formula for the coefficient. k choose n is going to be that fraction coefficient. You don't have to know that. It's fine. It's just um, a, a neat thing that comes out of that. And so, so you can, and, and then um, actually zero fits that formula. So you can put zero into that summation. All right, great. Now having the summation is going to help us then figure out what X is it converges for. It's called the interval of convergence. Uh, the tool that we use mostly for that is called the ratio test. You're looking at dividing successive terms. So we have to um, divide the um, the a sub n plus 1 term divided by the a sub n. So a sub n plus 1 means replace n with n plus 1, get the whole term, even the x. And then a sub n means to divide, uh, just divide by the entire series. So a sub n is just the, basically the, the terms that are inside the series. So a quick way to do that is to take the, um, replace the n's with n plus 1. So my numerator there I'm going to rip out that n, very careful, and put an n plus 1 in there. Um, I've, I've distributed the minus across, I think, from the formula from before, but that's okay. 
um, uh, denominator is n plus one factorial, and then their x is raised to the n plus one. So there's three individual terms here, and I've given them each their own fraction. This is the a sub n plus one. Now, instead of dividing by this fraction who is a sub n, I multiply by its reciprocal, then things are changing their orientation of where they add, add on the fraction. So basically, corresponding to these guys, we put the original terms from the a sub n. Underneath this k term, we have the k term from the series. On top of the n plus 1 factorial, we have n factorial. Underneath the x to the n plus 1, we have x to the n. All right, how do these things cancel? Well, um, in the numerator there, uh, this is k minus n. And then what happens is it's minus 1 and then plus 1. So, so we're going to get k minus n as the last guy. And uh, the, I've written the guy before that, which is k minus n plus 1. And so um, all of those guys are going to cancel. I'm going to be left just with k minus n. Um, with n plus 1 factorial, you can make it n plus 1 times n factorial. Cancel with the guy from up top x to the n plus 1, break it apart, x to the n times x, cancel with the guy from the bottom. With all that cancellation, it's absolute value bars too. Um, what we have then is uh, we have to find the limit as n goes to infinity on k minus n on top of n plus 1, and that's times x. With that fraction, n goes to infinity, that's going to go to negative 1. It's like, you know, either L'Hopital or, you know, looking at it like the derivative, I mean, the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. K is a constant, n is what we're focusing on. So it goes to negative one, but we're inside of absolute value bars. So, you know, the, the absolute value of a product is product of absolute values. So it's just the absolute value of x. Um, for the ratio test, um, the, the, um, the, this, this ratio here needs to be less than one for convergence. So that's it, the absolute value of x needs to be less than one. Distance from zero is one. So we can go to one or we can go to minus one for convergence. And so that's our interval of convergence, minus one to one, not including the endpoints. If we had more time, we could check the endpoints and see, but the, they don't get included. Um, and so this is our interval of convergence. We only can look at this function being represented by this power series for those particular x values. You couldn't look for this when x is equal to three. Okay, only between minus 1 and 1. All right, great. So, the next step then is to answer like a regular kind of a question that you might see. Um, so, here's a, here's a series that you're going to put into binomial format and find the first few terms of it and the interval of convergence. You can do this. All right, we have 1 plus 2x squared, who is to the, uh, who's underneath a cube root, which is to the one third power. We have our series, first few terms, and we have the interval of convergence there. Absolute value of x has to be less than one. So what do we do? Uh, who's playing the role of x? It's not one plus x in our series, it's one plus two x squared. Every place I see an x, I'm gonna put two x squared. What's the value of k? Well, if you're taking a q root, then k is the exponent on that, and you know, the fractional exponent that goes with the cube root is one third. Replace every k with one third. I have it done in blue here. Replace every x with two x squared. I have it done in red here, even in the interval of convergence. All right, great. Um, let's fix up the numerator first uh, of each of these guys. Well, the, the two guys there, the squared and, and the cubic term. A third minus one is negative two thirds. There's another negative two thirds in, in the coefficient of the numerator of uh, x cubed on the coefficient of that. And then there's a one third minus two. So that's going to be um, negative five thirds. So we can have a, a negative two thirds in green there, a negative two thirds in green again, a negative five thirds. Um, also, what I've done from the previous step is in the in the interval of convergence check, what I've done is I've just done some algebra here. Um, you can pull a two out and you could take the uh, you could take the square and make it just on the absolute value of x. So it's like having 2xx x and taking the absolute value of each one. So the 2 comes out, and then the xx x is really like the absolute value of x squared. All right, great. Well, um, we, can, we, we haven't squared or cubed the, the, the 2x squared, so we can do that now. And then we can fix up these numerators as well. We have um, 
is that 10 over 27 positive? Yep, and that's that's uh, negative 2 over 9 for the other one there. Um, and then we can also uh, divide by 2 in our interval of convergence and look at the absolute value of x squared being less than a half. Um, and then lastly, 2 factorial is a 2 and 3 factorial is a 6. It's like 3 times 2 times 1. It's a 6. And so we can fix the coefficient. It's a 10 over 27 um, over six, uh, there's an eight there because we had the cube, not just the x squared, we had to cube the two x squared, so cube the two. We had the square, not just the x squared, but square the two x squared. And so we end up um, squaring the two x squared, getting four x fourth, cubing the two x cubed, getting eight x sixth. We're doing great. A uh, little cancellation here then in those, in those numeric coefficients, we'll end up with one plus two-thirds of x squared. Um, what's going to happen nicely is that the, the two and the two factorial cancel, so we get minus four-ninths of x to the fourth. And then a little something strange here, the, um, the, the 10 and the 6 can do some kind of a canceling where the two, 10 becomes a 5 and the, the 6 becomes a, a 3. Um, with the 27, the, eight and the, uh, the 27 and the 3 is 81, and then the 5 and the 8 is 40. So 40 over 81, x to the 6th. And there's some more terms, higher order terms, uh, H-O-T, if you want to put that there. Um, in the, in the um, interval of convergence, you take the square root of both sides. That, that won't change the inequality. And so we can leave it rationali unrationalized like this. That's perfectly fine. So we have a way to represent 1 plus 2x squared to the 1 third, the very first few terms of the Taylor series on it. And we know for what what x is that's valid for good job uh, why do we care so what we're going to do is approximate we're going to stop after two terms or stopped after three terms and be able to say this is a pretty good approximation to this function it's good enough for, for all certain you know for all purposes we might need it for so here's a graph to sort of look at what visually well, what's going on behind the scenes we know the algebra okay fine the calculus but what's going on with the geometry so we have our graph um, in, in red is the function. We're only looking at it in this window from minus one to one on purpose because it's only convergent from minus one to one. And then we have stopping after two terms. So taking a quadratic, that's, that's a parabola in, in um, blue, parabola. Um, in green is a fourth degree. Um, you can't see the rest of it, but it, has, it makes a nice fourth degree kind of shape. And then um, using uh, four terms going up to x to the six, that's in black there. And the point is that um, I, I want you to see that the, uh, the green fits nicely, um, the blue fits better, and the black fits better than that. The further you go out, uh, at zero, they all are coinciding because, um, you know, that's how it's built to be. At the center, they're all going to be equal. And then the further you go out, they start to go off from each other. So it, um, this is why we do this. It's to approximate a function. Um, and so that's it. That's my my take on the binomial series hopefully is helpful. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, comment down below, like, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, my name is Nakaya Remmer. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.